Hello, my name is Sang Hoon Jung. I hope your day is going well, and today I prepared for you a presentation on my research project Celled, a novel stacked ensemble approach to skin lesion diagnosis. So let's begin with the problem at hand. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer by the age of 70, and melanoma, which is a prominent type of skin cancer, alone kills seven people worldwide every hour. And a lot of this devastation can be prevented with early detection. As you can see in the bottom right figure, the 5-year relative survival rate for a patient whose skin cancer is found in the localized stage is 99%, very high. But as time goes on and the cancer spreads, the survival rate dramatically decreases to 27%. So early detection is very crucial. But even with pre-screenings, the current golden standard in dermatology for diagnosing skin cancers is not that great, as there's around a 30% false negative rate and deadly skin cancers can go unnoticed. To make matters worse, it is extremely difficult for patients to diagnose themselves. So now let's take a look at why it might be so difficult to correctly diagnose a skin lesion. First, there are hundreds of types of different skin lesions, and many of them look very similar to each other. In addition, benign lesions are much more commonly found than cancerous ones, as for every melanoma, there are around 250,000 mimics. And each lesion is unique, which means that there's no clear-cut way for a dermatologist to classify a skin lesion correctly every single time. Finally, many benign lesions fit the ABCD criteria that dermatologists often use to diagnose skin cancers, so many lesions can disguise themselves as something they're not. And here, ABCD stands for asymmetry, border, color, and diameter. And now we have a little exercise. Out of these four images of lesions below, I want you to guess which two of them are cancerous. So the correct answer was lesion 2 and lesion 4, and if you got that correct, you must either be an expert in dermatology or really lucky, but if you didn't, you'll start to notice how difficult it is to diagnose skin lesions and why there is a problem. However, there is some hope in the status quo. Advances in machine learning promise for more accurate and accessible diagnosis in the future. And the logic behind this is that skin cancers can be primarily diagnosed off of images, which are made up of pixels, which a machine can decode as information. Therefore, a machine can be input an image of a skin lesion and output a classification with a high accuracy. And past models have already achieved this, listed here. One of the leading models in today's world is Zinri's Wings in 2018 with an accuracy of 90.167%. So we will be using his model as the control for my study. And my model, which I named CELD, aims to maximize the accuracy and minimize the loss with any given data set. Finally, the scientific question I considered was, Will simplifying a machine learning diagnosis task improve the accuracy of the model? So now we come to the concept of gradient descent, which is the foundation idea of how machines learn. The idea behind this is that in any data set, there's going to be a trend, as you can see in the top right image. Let's take the example of the cost of a house versus the number of square feet in the house. And when you plot this data, there will be some sort of trend equation that best models this. Let's call that equation y equals mx plus b. And in reality, our trend equation will not be that simple, but for the sake of explaining, we will consider the linear equation y equals mx plus b. Then the goal of a machine will be to guess those values of m and b that give us the best equation to model the data set. And to get this best equation, the machine first generates a random equation y equals mx plus b for random values of coefficients m and b. And this first equation is then input into something called the cost function, which you, can see, which you can see the formula for on the bottom left, and this function quantifies how accurate our equations are in modeling the data set. And when you plot a cost function along the plugged-in coefficients, as shown in the bottom right, the corresponding graph will have one or more dips in it, and the lowest point of these dips is called the local minima. And in this case, the leftmost minima leads to the best equation for modeling our data because the lowest point in the graph corresponds to an equation of lowest error. And wherever your starting point is on the graph, it's going to eventually roll down to the local minima, or an optimal point as demonstrated by the image in the bottom right. So kind of like a ball rolling down a hill, any starting point is going to reach a local minima. And for the sake of time, I will skip over the finer details, but what is most important to understand right now is that each of these three local minima will all lead to equations that model our data set decently, but there will only be one minima, which is the lowest point, which we will call the global minima. And based on where our starting point is on the graph, our ball will roll down to a different minima, but we want it to roll down to the global minima. And it is important to note here that in a graph that has many oscillations or many dips, it will be increasingly difficult to find the global minima because there are so many local minima that cover it and compete with it. 
So with that information, let's take a look at why my model is hypothesized to be more accurate than traditional ones. The bottom image shows the logic framework of traditional models. It's input an image of a skin lesion, and in only one step, it classifies what type of skin cancer it is. Whereas, if you look at the top image, my model celled simplifies this diagnosis task into two steps. First, celled classifies whether the lesion is cancerous or benign, and if it is indeed cancerous, my model further differentiates what, ty what type of skin cancer it is in stage 2. And on the surface, this might not seem very significant. How could simplifying a diagnosis task improve the accuracy of a model? Well, there are many reasons as to why this might be advantageous. First, by simplifying a task, you're decreasing the number of factors to consider in each stage to produce an equation. For example, if you're classifying a lesion as cancerous or benign, you might take into consideration three different factors. The size of the lesion, the symmetry of the lesion, and the color of the lesion. Whereas, when you're further classifying a lesion as what type of cancer it might be, you might be taking into consideration if there is a border around the lesion, or if there is a differentiating characteristic of a certain skin cancer, like seborrheic keratosis. And if you were to diagnose a skin lesion all in one step, you would have to consider all of these factors at once, which we say is forcing convergence. But by simplifying the diagnosis task into two separate stages, we're decreasing the number of factors to consider, which gives us a more manageable and accurate equation. And recalling back to our previous slide, we said that we want our graph to have less oscillations and less minima, because then it is easier to find the global minima. And by decreasing the number of factors to consider, we need less coefficients in our equation, so therefore, our cost function will have less oscillations, which makes it easier for my model cell to find the global minima. In addition, the dataset that I worked with, the HAM 10,000 dataset, was relatively small as it contained about 10,000 images. And a larger amount of data is required to find a sufficient pattern to answer bigger questions and bigger tasks, so I hypothesized that in this way, simplifying the diagnosis task will further benefit my model and its accuracy. And now, we can employ an analogy to better understand this concept, the lock and key analogy. Let's say that the lock is our dataset and the number of factors to consider in that dataset. Then the key will be our equation to model these factors and the data. And as you increase the number of factors, you make the lock more complex, and vice versa. If you decrease the number of factors, you simplify the lock. There are going to be way more keys that are able to unlock the simpler lock, and for the complex lock, as you increase the number of factors, it will be increasingly difficult to find a key to unlock it. So in that way, my two-step approach is hypothesized to increase the accuracy of my model. So now we look at some methods that I implemented in my program. We have data augmentation, which generates more data from one parent. This method was especially useful in the study because, as I mentioned before, I worked with a pretty small data set. So data augmentation allowed me to increase the total amount of data for the machine to work with, increasing the accuracy of my model. I also implemented transfer learning, which allows knowledge from one task to be applied to others. This increases the starting accuracy, the rate of improvement, and the final accuracy of my model. I chose my model to be based on a convolutional neural network, and the figure on the top right depicts a convolution operation, which allows my model to better recognize patterns in an image, optimizing my machine's understanding of the representations of images and uh, ultimately increasing the accuracy. So before we take a look at how my model performed, let's first define some key terms that will help us understand those results, loss and accuracy. On the left, as demonstrated by the image, loss is the difference between the predicted value of a model and the true value, how far away a model was from the actual true correct answer. On the other hand, accuracy is simply the number of correct predictions over the total number of predictions. And I say that my model's multi-step simplifying approach will be considered effective when compared to Zwing's control model, my model has a greater than or equal to 1% accuracy and or a less than or equal to 3% loss. So now let's take a look at the results. We see a side-by-side -side comparison of my model's best performance versus the controls. My model had a 22.539% loss compared to the control's 33.357% loss. And this favors my model by 10.818% in terms of loss. And in terms of accuracy, my model was also favored by 1.875% as my model reached a best performance of 92.042% accuracy compared to the control's 90.167%. And these two figures just simply serve to visualize and quantify the results I just revealed to you in the previous slide. 
And now before we interpret those results, let's make sure that we are upholding the scientific process, that we're comparing apples to apples. We want to make sure that there was only one main independent variable in play to sway the results. Well, we both use the same data set, HAM 10,000, we both use the same coding environment, Google Colab, and we both implemented the same methods, data augmentation, transfer learning, and global and local feature extraction. We both employed a convolutional neural network, so we see that the main difference between my model and the controls is that I took on a two-staged simplified approach, whereas they used a one-staged combined approach. And that led to my model having a higher accuracy and less loss. So we can attribute those results to Seld's simplified approach. And before we finish, let's reflect on some real-world applications and continuations of my project. First, with our previous definitions, we can consider my model's simplified approach to be effective, as it achieved both a greater than or equal to 1% accuracy and a less than or equal to 3% loss. And on the surface, these num numbers might not seem too impressive. But if you look at the bigger picture, millions of people are diagnosed with skin cancer worldwide each year, and hundreds of thousands of people die from it. So even our marginal increase in accuracy of 1.875% translates to countless new diagnoses for more people to get treated early. And looking at the broader application of my experiment, this study suggests that simplifying tasks and avoiding convergence can optimize the accuracy and loss of a model. And this idea can be applied to practically all machine learning projects. And going forward, there are some continuations of this project. The significance of the study can be strengthened and widened by simplifying more tasks and working with more datasets with more lesions. In addition, a next step for me would be to turn this machine learning project into a mobile app for people to have easier access to diagnosis. And thank you for listening. I really hope you found my project interesting.